Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to day number 21. And uh, today we are going to look at the Karo Khan, the second day of Karo Khan. So welcome to all the viewers out here. Uh, let me just check who all are here. <laughs> everyone's go everyone's singing the song. Yeah, Sagar Shah. <laughs> it seems like the song has become very famous. Uh, and uh, I should I should do something about it. Maybe maybe it should be used in my streams if I'm late uh, <laughs> when when we are about to begin. Uh, that should be played. So welcome to Rachit, Murugan, Ryan, Uday, Aditya, Sumed, Shivendra, Efanio, Kakali, Santosh. Nihilesh, John Wong. Yeah, it's it's quite a tricky time. Yeah, right now, uh, like there's so much going on in the world, uh, not related to chess. In fact, um, so many of them, my family and everyone, constantly there's there's a tension about uh, outside what's going to happen. When is work going to resume? Is everything going to be okay? Uh, related to the corona and so it's it's not easy uh, to always keep on working I guess you all must be facing similar issues as well but I think we should all try our best whatever we can do uh, Ishan Mahajan says luckily woke up early and now attending your session fantastic Ishan so that's why I, I make it a point that I should be streaming I should be analyzing these openings and I should be sharing my knowledge with you because it just helps not just you but also me to remain in a good mindset. What about the photo? Well, can anyone guess who is the person in the thumbnail? Uh, not me, but who the other one? Who is it in the thumbnail? So if you can guess it, let me know. Okay, let me first make the first move on the board. Yeah, that's our beloved opening. Yeah, yeah, Murugan, you're right. Absolutely. Absolutely. How did you guess? Yeah, no. He, he is my brother. Uh, he is uh, his name is Ronak. He is my real brother. And uh, the reason I kept his photo is because I just want to, you know, thank him for for being always a very rock solid support in my chess career. Uh, he he he's not interested in chess as, as such. In fact, many times he would tell me what a boring game what a dull game uh, when I was young. But slowly and steadily, he understood uh, my passion for it. And I think him not taking too much interest in chess always kept things very normal uh, between us. Like uh, he was not very uh, much like, OK, so how did you do in the tournament and s stuff like that? Or, oh, you lost, oh, you won, something like that. So it was always like we had other interests, other things that we would discuss. Uh, and and that was very interesting always because I think everyone needs this balance where people are interested in your chess very much and there are also people who are not you can't use the word disinterested but they just put this balance like they are interested in other things that you do so that's how it is yes big brother he is five years elder to me uh, four and a half around four years so Let's begin uh, the game. And we are today going to look at a very specific line in the Karo Khan and that is knight to c3. And believe me, if you're going to play the Karo Khan, you're going to face this very, very often. Very often, as, almost as equally as e5 in your games. So you need to be well prepared against it. I'm just going to uh, load the chat here so that I can I can have a look at it. 
okay yeah yeah rk says that helps in a way to keep interest in other things yeah also when you when you lose games or when you think life is really bad because you're too much into chess keeps a balance and i think it's good to have both both types of people someone who's just knows every move that you make and someone who is just totally detached yes aditya will we'll look at perk defense also so knight c3 this is the classical and then uh, i now recommend you to take always so even if your opponent goes knight d2 you should take take and we reach the same position okay take 94 and now just to check whether everyone here is a is awake i would want you to tell me what is the best move for black black to move yeah quality 959 says knight f6 is a possibility here definitely you can take and play e f6 this is a line which is quite popular recently although i haven't really played it and i think it's a playable line you can go bd6 next move you can castle it looks fine but i want to do something different let's see if you can come up yes bishop f5 everyone is yeah absolutely bishop f5 is the correct move and also shows that everyone is awake here very nice so this is what i play and now knight g3 i think this is what you will face if you look at this position bishop d3 doesn't make any sense i think you just simply pick up a pawn with queen d4 mm and and yeah there are no no better moves so bishop knight g3 bishop g6 and uh, there are few approaches now the main line as we looked at yesterday and which we are going to discuss in detail is h4 h6 and knight f3 the other move uh, that is very common uh, in this position is knight h3 or knight e2 and this one actually knight h3 or knight e2 is very dangerous very risky line for black has to be very careful so this is one uh, and the other one is um, <coughs> knight h3 knight e2 and the other line which is very important and i mean you will face often is just knight f3 and trying to just develop like bishop d3 castles not really interested in in these h4 ideas okay so after bishop g6 let's begin with what shall we look at first i'm i'm just thinking let's look at the main line h4 and i want to take you back in time in 2000 uh i think 9 maybe it was 2011 no sorry not 2011 it was in 2011 january and i just started playing uh, the karo khan i started it in 2010 so this was maybe my third or fourth game and this is the first time i was playing it against a grandmaster my opponent was deepan chakravarti you all know him very well uh so i played h6 h5 as we know already this is not an accurate move order because after knight f3 does anyone know why this is not the most accurate move order that we are discussing here let me know in the chat okay murugan you identified my brother by my face okay fantastic uh who else what about bishop f5 queen f3 it was played by against me twice by an im okay interesting ship schieber spieler says that in this position queen f3 has been played twice against him very very interesting move i have never faced it but i basically i i would say if i face it in the game i would play e6 here 
and then what's your idea next uh, you know many of the things like if you go c3 I, i'm just going to play knight d7 and then i will play my knight to f6 then bishop e7 and i'll castle so i guess some of the lines in karokan requires um, theory but many of the lines don't need theory you can just play it without with just a knowledge of how the pieces are developed yeah so let me see yeah very good everyone here has rightly pointed out that after knight g3 h4 h6 h5 now when he goes knight f3 i'm not obliged to play knight d7 to stop knight e5 and that means that uh, the g6 bishop is not attacked and uh, i can actually go for quick development with e6 knight f6 bishop e7 castle and later go c5 and develop my knight to c6 that's the the main main point yeah very good so okay knight d7 i played at that point because i was not uh, so aware about these intricacies no one on youtube had started a series on karo khan and was explaining all of these things so i i didn't know all of that uh, bishop d3 and i think monica uh, yesterday one of the viewers had said why does black play a move like bishop f5 bg6 bishop h7 and then in one move exchange oops not that way exchange just the bishops in one move and to which i feel monica that imagine in this position you had a bishop on c8 and you are playing and yes you had three extra tempi but the problem is this bishop to solve it you would have to use the tempi anyway so here with the bishop being already out and you exchanging it your remaining position becomes very cohesive like you're putting your pawns on light squares your bishop is not there now you brought it out and exchange it so in a way it makes your position nice and that's what you are spending time on okay so i now after bd3 bd3 queen d3 i like to play e6 the the main reason being that i want to keep this bishop open first actually knight f6 is also one of the main moves but i am playing e6 now uh, bishop d2 is the main move as we have discussed ah mayur you just joined maybe 5 5 to 7 minutes you can you can have a look at it uh so bishop f4 is one of the main moves in this position but to which i would recommend you to give a check bishop d2 and bishop b4 we'll try to look at a couple of games in this line uh but the main move that therefore is bd2 and we want to look at this main line so knight f6 deepan castled i was very nervous you know because first time facing a gm in the karo khan and he's castled he played king b1 and here i was thinking uh now actually after all these years of preparation i have realized that to king b1 uh i'm going to castle okay in this position i will castle here uh, and this is something that we will discuss uh in the in the next few minutes but that time i was very confused and i was like should i go castle should i play something else and i played the move c5 here which was not the best but okay uh, after c5 he went knight e4 and i played queen to c7 again quite dangerous chess i should have taken here basically uh, on e4 queen e4 and perhaps knight f6 I could have given up this pawn. I was thinking of it during the game, but after queen b7, castles, I was just not finding enough compensation here, which is true. So maybe taking on e4 was not the best. There are other moves like cd4, which is pretty decent, or even queen b6 for that matter looks interesting. Uh, queen c7, I played. He took on f6. I took back with the knight. He played knight to e5. 
and now I castled. So I was just uh, happy with my position. I have got in the break C5 and now I'm ready to put pressure on the D file. I'll put my other rook on C8. It's a typical position and I was expecting him to play something like G4 which looks very very dangerous. By the way, what will you play here in this position after your opponent plays g4? Let's see how many of you are able to get the feel of Karokan flowing. You know how many of you are able to understand what is the best move here? Black to move. Uh, Elam Parthi B5 seems very slow right now. Like if you go B5, I'll go G5, then you take, I may play H6, then G6, and then Knight G6. I think white is just crashing through very quickly here. So I wouldn't play B5. Yes, Rook D8, but which Rook? That is important. Many of you are saying rook d8, but fd8 turns out to be a mistake. All those who said rook ad8, well done guys. This is the correct move. Also, you just need to play in the center many times. When your opponent is attacking, if you can play in the center, like now g5, there is no time for it because you lose the pawn. And then the e5 knight starts to, oops, sorry. Then the e5 knight starts to become very... Uh, problematic and you know this is a big issue like you take the queen f e7 uh, rook into d2 takes king takes rook d2 queen e5 and i think black is just better here two pawns for the for the two rooks and queen you know so rook a d8 the reason why i play rook a d8 and not rook f d8 is because rook f d8 can be met with this knight f7 strike King f7, queen g6, king g8, and now g5. And I think white is getting some very nasty attacking possibilities. So that's the reason why you must you must be careful in the Karo Khan. You must really be careful. So I was thinking of all these lines. I was uh, hoping that I can survive. I'm playing a strong opponent. And all of a sudden, he takes the pawn on h6. And I was like, what? Did I just blunder? Am I going to get checkmated? Uh, you know, when you lack confidence, these are the first thoughts that come to your mind. But when you start becoming confident in your chess, then you start feeling, oh, that's a blunder. What's the point of this move? Let me just take it. So I thought for a long time. Eventually, I took it because there was nothing better. Uh, and he played queen g3 check. And now his trap was that if I if I play king h8, of course it's very bad because I can give knight g6 check and then pick up the queen. So I played queen to king to h7. He gave a check and now I decided to continue with king h8. He went queen e3. So I took on d4. Maybe not the best choice. I think uh, much better would have been knight to g8. I think knight g8 would have solved a lot of my problems. But you see, when you are not confident about your abilities, you are not ready to make some passive moves. Now it is absolutely clear to me that knight g8 is so strong because next move I can just continue rook d8, bishop f6 if required. My king is very safe. Everything looks perfect. But CD, Queen H6, Knight H7, and I thought I was doing okay. And then came another surprise for me here. What will you play here as white? Yeah, RK says I lost my only game with GM due to this fear. If there is one advice I can give you is that grandmasters or even IMs or even strong players. They do not know everything about chess. If players like Anand, 
Kasparov, Karpov can make mistakes, then anyone can. So you don't need to think that they know everything and I am not so good and so on. You need to be confident. Yeah, knight g6, excellent. Knight g6 is what Deepan played and I think that's his only cho chance to be in the game. I took, he took, now he's two pieces down. And now uh, I played bishop f6. I was okay if he took on h7, I would take back rook h7, king g8. And I think I'm very happy with my position. Uh, there's no way he can checkmate me. My bishop on f6 is very strong. He went queen uh, d2 back in this position and I was surprised with queen d2. I played bishop at g7 again very good move. Queen e2 was played and uh, I decided to defend my e6 pawn. He took king g8 and now he played queen to h5. So think about this. You are playing in the first round of Chennai Open. Uh, you are almost beating a GM for the f no I had already beaten a couple of GMs until then but Deepan is a very strong GM and now you need to make a good move what do you play as black what do you play here black to move it's your chance to beat a gm how do you continue it's everything looks under control everything is great queen e5 mitesh okay mitesh queen e5 is uh, one of those typical moves you play when you are afraid of your opponent you know all those who said queen e5 white to move and mate in two can you find it see this this is a way in which you are like oh i must exchange the queens my king is under attack and then you make the move out of respect or fear or whatever it is and just game over can you see how to finish off the opponent after queen e5 yeah no one uh, everyone still replying what is white's move a lot of chats but i think there's always some lag to my question and your answer yeah anuj bansal absolutely rishi mundra no yeah soham kamotra very good guys rook h8 check and uh, when you take and mate, that's just sad, you know. You played so well and it was because of your fear. Why not just take on f2 here? It's so simple. There's a... You just need to breathe. I'm, I'm looking at, oh, rook h1, there will be a mate on my king. He will give a check and I'll be checkmated. But before that, there is a mate on his king. You must develop this habit in you, no matter who is your opponent. Can you, which is relatively better than queen e5, but rook f2 was just killing because rook f2, rook c1, the rook is tied. Now I go d3. You can't really take on d3 because of rook takes b2. This bishop is here. And uh, c3, rook f8. Next move, I'll go rook f1. I'll, I'll win this without any trouble. Still feels bad, yeah, after so many years. Rook f5, queen h4. And now a typical mistake rook to b5 very bad move I just couldn't think you know i think uh, now if i'm given this position i would find some move like queen e7 at least i'm not i'm not scared of my opponent that's the main thing rook b5 he played rook h1 i took king takes on b2 d3 this was my idea that wherever you go you're going to get checkmated but i forgot that he could actually nervous yeah so and then eventually uh, I managed to draw the game which was a great result for me but 
it was not good i mean the what happened was not the the best okay uh let's go to the next game this was my game against shubhada sawant local player from mumbai but more interesting is the ideas here let's see if you can so now i want to give you more and more ideas bishop f5 knight g3 bg6 h4 h6 knight f3 knight d7 h5 takes takes e6 bd2 knight f6 castles bishop e7 you know all these moves by heart now knight e4 was played and uh, the point is what should you play here so if you look at it in this position this is like the tabia tabia is the critical opening position okay um of a of a opening where there are a lot of possibilities now in this tabia king b1 is one of the main moves knight e4 is one of the main moves and i think i when i analyzed it i also saw c4 queen e2 uh knight f1 rook d e1 rook h1 so you know there are so many possibilities in this position but by far the two main moves are king b1 and knight e4 the reason king b1 is played is that in future this pawn is protected on a2 and also the king is tucked away on the side that's the main reason and i deepan had played king b1 i in this game shubhada played knight to e4 i think i i worked on this line for quite some time and i came to the conclusion that queen b6 is a very good move here in this position because now i can just place my rook on d8 opposing your queen and put a lot of pressure on you in this position so rook d8 was the the best move but uh here i took which is also fine takes takes so this is another way you can play queen e2 and now there is one uh, interesting line as as i think has been mentioned by soham uh, who says queen d5 is a possible move where you attack the pawn on a2 you see the the benefit of of the king not being on b1 is that you can attack it and then after king b1 or c4 whatever you play i can go queen e4 i played the same thing in the game i first castled here actually after queen e2 i castled i didn't play queen d5 she played queen king b1 and now i played queen to d5 my opponent here played a very ambitious move and this is very common in the karo khan and this is something you should keep in mind whenever the g3 knight is moved and you castle the first move that white thinks about is to play g4 because g4 is such an aggressive move it opens up and white is always happy if black takes this pawn whenever black takes this pawn white goes rook d g1 and most of the times you cannot move the knight because bishop into h6 comes in this position and if you play something like f5 then um, you know i'll just move my knight away and then play f3 and push you back and it will be very very dangerous for you in this position so i played queen uh, after g4 now it's your move so what will you play here as black let's try to understand this position a bit more let's try to understand black to move what do you play here as black again a typical idea i i'll give you so many typical ideas that at the end you will be like oh let me see if this idea works let me see if that idea works and then you can play it better uh kakali in that position knight e5 then i guess knight into e5 that's why i played knight e1 with the idea of playing f3 yeah queen e4 very good guys very strong class i love it 
queen e4 everyone's right my opponent now suddenly th said if you want to attack now you may want to consider bishop e3 but then after knight takes g4 rook d g1 and now f5 you can see there's a difference here my queen is much better placed his queen is pinned i have chances to take i can also plan moves like f4 if at some point possible it's too many differences in this position as compared to just taking the pawn first and rook dg1 so queen e4 she took here she was like okay let me take uh, build with python says i'm amazed how scandinavian and karo khan are similar queen d5 is a move we play all the time when white queenside castles yes absolutely you are right in fact all the people who play the scandinavian can actually learn a lot from karo khan just i'll uh, come to this position again i just want to show how like ta uh, takes queen d5 knight c3 queen a5 d4 c6 knight f3 bishop g4 and uh, after bishop c4 you play e6 suppose some position like this you can see the structure is just the same in fact here the only disadvantage sometimes is that after say a move like h3 bishop h5 g4 i think there's some line like this you may have to give up your this bishop for the knight and that's why karo khan has a much better reputation than the scandinavian because these two bishops are exchanged it's more solid but if you are playing the karo khan you may even look at scandinavian because the structure is the same in a way you know these pawns over here so nice nice uh, uh, observation build with python very happy uh, to see it so i played queen e4 he took queen takes e4 knight into e4 and he played and she played bishop e3 and now and now the question is how should black continue yeah i'm not a big a big expert in the scandinavian so whatever i showed right now may have some flaws theme line wise but i'm just saying the structure is the same uh sudhakar are shipping done for books to other states sudhakar i think tomorrow is when we uh, ship all the books so you should be getting them very soon all those who want the books can place an order today and we'll ship it tomorrow um we've coordinated with the shipping company and uh, two of us will go to the office it's just nearby but it's a uh, risky right now to go but still i think it's important that everyone gets the books so tomorrow we'll do that mm mm Come on guys try to think this is not very tough position just think about it how do you want to continue yeah rook d8 rook f d8 c5 everything looks pretty okay but there's one move which simply gives you an advantage so hum you are absolutely right also john wong you are right very good john wong ilam parthi be a little more active ilam parthi in this position how can you be very active oh uh anshuman das says sagar bhai aapko instagram pe message kiya hu kuch free ho ke reply kar dena sure anshuman and uh, i i have to thank anshuman uh like he has contributed so much you know in super chats there are always these different colors uh, like you have yellow green uh, orange but anshuman's super chat always is in the red and uh, he yesterday i think at the blind uh, game that was played with saundarya aryan against the comedians he contributed 10000 rupees there and he contributed so many times i've seen 10000 5000 2000 i mean the amount of support he's shown for chess uh, streamers and chess in general is great and i think such actions mean a lot to for example i know that a player like vidit when he's streaming he doesn't he is not looking for super chat as such he's looking for more to interact but when he gets such a super chat he realizes that oh this is great that people are enjoying it and and then he streams more 
and then you know you have more content and so many things so i feel like anshuman das you are doing a big big service thank you so much for that Sa shri saiket chilapalli says how to avoid opening traps uh, well the best way shri saiket is to is to watch this series uh, it's 21 videos watch them you will be able to learn openings pretty well now all the people over here but uh, who thought for the move f5 well done excellent move brilliant move and it just you latch on to this uh pawn over here you open the f file and it's just too strong too strong my opponent now played knight e5 i think if she would have taken here i would have taken with the rook and i'm just better because there's so much pressure on the f file she played here but now i played f4 knight g6 fe knight e7 king h7 fe and knight f2 and i went on to win this game i'm an exchange up and uh, its rest is not so difficult i mean so f5 was very strong in this position i hope that all of you could appreciate the strength of that move yeah So coming to uh, another interesting game in this line I think it's one of one against the highest rated players that I've ever played Vaibhav Suri GM Vaibhav Suri I was black and uh, same opening nothing much difference takes e6 bd2 knight f6 castles bishop e7 king b1 see if you play <laughs> you can play king b1 or knight e4 king b1 was played uh now i castled knight e4 and now you know later on i went on to prepare the move c5 as well in this position i'm giving you this pointer because you can look at c5 here pretty decent move but the most important thing is that after c5 you need to prepare against a very very active move by white see for example if white takes d c5 you have absolutely nothing to worry after knight c5 because what will happen is that he'll take on d8 you will take rook takes d8 uh knight f6 bishop f6 all of this normal position this is just equal okay i'm i'll show you one game of mine but there is one move which scares which is scary and you need to prepare against it very well after c5 can anyone tell me what this move is afanyo gen says aren't the pawns on g6 and e6 weak yes they are but you are going to play c5 you are going to uh, how do i put how should i explain the karo khan structure to you you know karo khan structure is like is like your your dear friend or let's say your little brother where you say i know that he is he has his weaknesses i know that he is not the best but i love him you know i i i love the little things i love this break which is there i love that there are attacks that come against the white king i love that in the end game i am so solid with my position and for all these positives i am ready to take on some weaknesses like g7 is i am ready to uh, be a little bit passive and this is how it works yeah like you need to see yes very good everyone who said g4 here fantastic he, this is the move every time you are looking at a blacks uh, pos like white's possibilities in a position you must look at g4 if he comes with g4 g5 who it's going to be risky and now for example let's say you take which seems like the normal move and then queen e2 because uh, oops not queen a3 very bad move uh let's say rook dg1 i was thinking of here in this position but then f5 is possible it becomes very sharp it becomes very sharp i don't know if how many games were played recently in this line is there any recent game that's happening uh, i'm not aware of i think david navara's games should be studied uh, and the latest game after 2019 has not happened here so i guess people have started avoiding this with the 
black pieces this move c5 in general and so what the move which is being coming into limelight i and i'm not sure but if you if you prepare it very well like if you know to g4 i take and then he plays queen e2 i know exactly what is to be done here like i must play cd4 then he goes rook d g1 i must play f5 if you or i must give a pawn sack with d3 all of this preparation if you can do along with an engine then you will be able to beat your opponents even in this complex position but if you go to the board and like ah okay knight g4 i'll take i'll see what then you are going to get mated because this is really a risky setup so because people don't want to get into this g4 stuff you take take and play knight f6 queen e2 queen d5 okay in this position we know this move already uh, vaibhav played queen uh, knight e5 and i just as always i know i want to exchange i i don't want to pick up this pawn and then get mated in the next few moves oops not there bishop into h6 so uh, i went queen e4 my opponent now took knight takes and bishop e1 and i remember thinking to myself what is this move bishop e1 and then later i realized he wants to push my knight back then he wants to play g4 gain some space and be very happy with his position so i began thinking like what should i do what should i do in this position you know and this is a general advice to all of you in such positions how should you continue here with black yeah preparation level is often deep in such openings i think and at the top level because at least 10 moves are just very normal you take on e4 then you play bishop f5 bg6 h6 bishop h7 knight d7 e6 knight f6 i mean in karo khan at least classical line 12 13 moves you just don't think you just play <laughs> aman kumar yeah karo khan is like a beautiful girl everyone says yeah i i dis i decide when to use the beautiful girl uh, uh, analogy uh, here maybe not usually uh, i use it when some i i stream with him uh, and in the morning sessions but yes in general karo khan like any other opening has its downsides and upsides if you like it you should play it uh here f5 is not a great move because it weakens this square remember f5 was good only when the pawn was on g4 because you open up lines when that is not possible it doesn't make sense to play f5 i think the best thing to do is what i had thought of uh is rook f d8 f3 just come back bishop f2 offer the exchange of knights if he takes i think you would be very happy you can just then play rook d8 bishop f6 and i think it's just equal nothing much goes knight d3 you play a5 basically i'm keeping my structure intact and i'm playing on and uh, i was just analyzing this line for some time and i realized that it's a pretty fine position for both sides like okay it was just a fun analysis and at the end the knight comes out and it's a it's a draw like this position so my point is you can go rook f d8 bring your knight back and just play but during the game i thought i should do something active and i played c5 which is not a good move because c5 allows f3 goes back and bishop f2 when actually white has somehow maybe not bishop f2 but let's say maybe something like dc bishop c5 and then c4 with the idea of bishop c3 and then putting pushing your queen side pawns would have been slightly better for white because his majority seems slightly more active you know this understanding which end game is better for you which is not will come after playing a bit of these openings so bishop f2 i played cd bishop d4 rook f c8 he played c4 and now i went bd6 
B3 and I just took the knight. I just felt that my knight would be superior. He took with the bishop, uh, rook c5 and now f4 which was a mistake and I, I managed to actually outplay Vaibhav who is a very strong GM with move b5, cb, rook b5 and you will see that now I have a much better position because a5, a4 is coming, knight is jumping to d5 and really white has to be very careful. I played a5, rook h3. I played knight g, maybe knight g4 was not required, I could go knight d5, uh, knight g4, a4, rook b4, bishop c7 and, and later on uh, I actually managed to win a pawn here which was a very good achievement and I was winning in this game but the in the end in time scramble things went wrong like horribly wrong. Uh, I remember it was like the position was something like this. I had my pawns running there. He had his pawns running here. So you see this. It was crazy. Like I have these pawns all about to queen. He has these pawns about to queen. But somehow uh, he made uh, a queen first. I made a queen. He made another queen. And I was hoping there would be some mate here. But it was not to be uh, at the end. He checkmated me. So, Konsa Vaibhav apna sethya ya koyar? No, no. It's Vaibhav Suri, one of the best uh, GMs in Indian chess. His rating is around 2600. Very strong player. Okay. So, just second let me get ready for the next part guys are you enjoying Karo Khan let me know in the comments how is Karo Khan for you is it fun is it how is it are you learning something While you tell me whether you are learning or not, I am going to load the next game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the guy who won Gropri. Actually, he's uh, he's won a lot of things. Rakshit, I will I will have a look at your mail and I will get back to you. Ilampati says nice. Mitesh is saying fun. Okay. Shriyana Malia, yes. Monika Bhagat, fun. Okay, good, good, good. Funny, fun, okay, nice. Sleepy Nihilesh. Nihilesh, please go to sleep. Don't sit here. Uh, I, uh, Sambartha, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the long castle variation, so I'm not going to show that, but I think by all means you should, you should check it out. It's not a bad line at all. It's not at all bad. So have a look at it. Andres Benjamin Alcaso Perez. Wow, what a big name. He says, I love Karo Khan. At first hated it, but now use it all the time. John Wong says, used to know the line with Queen E2 and Knight E5. Okay. Okay. <sighs> nice. Okay. Good, good. If you are enjoying, gives me good motivation to work. Keep working. So this is Karo Khan, Knight C3. This is now against Ketan Boricha, who is a strong player from Mumbai, around 2150 rated. Uh, and I was black. This was a rapid. And now after looking at Bishop D2 quite a lot, we now come to the move Bishop F4. So black to move after Bishop F4. What do you play? Okay, Andres Benjamin, it's a Mexican name. I'll keep keep that in mind. Uh, welcome to the show. <laughs> Mastermind says it became my GM GF. Okay, uh, Bishop F four. Uh, 
I now uh, could play something like say knight f6 and so on but I think the best move is queen to a5 check and the point is very simple that I want to uh, play bishop I want to force you to put bishop back on d2 and then come back to c7 okay in most of the lines but I'm going to recommend you bishop b4 move here uh, queen a5 check uh, now many people ask why not c3 the reason why c3 is not good is because after knight f6 now you can never castle easily on the queen side and because a2 is hanging and if you castle on the king side then h5 starts to hang so all in all it's not a good position to play c3 that is the reason why they play bishop d2 if opponent plays queen d2 I think you can even just exchange it and get a very solid end game I don't see any problems with black here so he must go bishop d2 now most of the times you go back and you castle but I am recommending the move bishop to b4 here okay and the point is that you want to play c3 uh, let make him play c3 and then come back and then c4 and then come back to c7 okay this is the idea and then after long castle you can play knight, knight gf6 and uh, people argue like you have given this move c4 for free to white but as you will see in the game it's not free let's have a look at what happened so my opponent played c3 i played bishop e7 by the way there is one interesting move here after bishop b4 which is knight e4 i want you guys to tell me what would you play here as black black to move what would you play here as black yes ngf6 very good guys excellent you are very strong because you're not afraid of this check and uh, this check is very very powerful uh, it seems but actually it's not because you go king e7 and I remember I played a blitz tournament at the start of this year and I was playing against this young boy Anirudh Potawad from Mumbai and he actually uh, played this line but the thing was I played Karokan after such a long time that in a blitz game it was difficult to remember my analysis I did play queen b4 here which is a good move and he quickly lashed out with queen a3 and I began to think what is the move here what should I play but it turns out that after takes takes rook h uh, rook a b8 knight a5 rook h c8 actually black has the advantage here because black is going to play c5 although he's a pawn down these pawns are weak and black gets a very good position okay here so this is very good for black and also if white plays queen b3 here now I recommend taking the pawn on d4 if long castle you can uh, I think there are many moves here but uh, rook a b8 looks the best and then queen a3 check you go c5 knight a5 threatening knight c6 check and then rook h c8 uh, something like knight c4 queen into f queen into f2 and uh, if you want to take you can take you can even play just check and it looks slightly scary for uh, black because his king is in the center but next you can just tuck your king in 
and uh, this seems okay i mean taking the pawn is much better uh, as per the computers they say that okay this is just nothing to worry about of course we as humans are always worried about oh our king is here uh, what if there's some check coming in but turns out that this position is just better for i mean is equal and there's nothing much to worry about yeah so queen uh, here the point is after knight d2 queen b4 is this is the idea like you play knight gf6 that's the point okay so my opponent played c3 i played bishop e7 he went knight e4 i played nf6 he played c4 i played queen to c7 we know all of this he long castled and now i was thinking i will castle short it will be an interesting game but then i decided to play something active can you tell me black to move what should black play yeah yeah nupur taking on f2 is scary but i think you can work it out try to look at it with the engine try to see white's attacking ideas and then how you defend and it should be okay it should be okay there how should black continue here that's the question and i think every karokan player if you if i give this position to say swapnil or vidit or tej kumar or lalit they will come up with the move in 1 second because it's just natural uh not long castle manan sagar not c5 rishi mundra thank you prince ilam parthi very good active play eugene ong well done kakali paul excellent nihilesh now you're not feeling sleepy ya yeah, nihilesh pranav junjare nupur sancheti excellent uh John Wong fantastic Shriana not c5 no there's a better move than c5 all those who want to play c5 uh you should be careful of ideas of d5 in this position very dangerous opening up your king the right move here is by far okay rook d8 is a good move ryan rajesh i have to give it to you i would say rook d8 is not bad but an active possibility here is just b5 and this move comes very powerfully and this shows the drawback of the move c4 because you are making a beautiful outpost for your knight on d5 so after let's say he takes on b5 first of all there is a discovered check so you don't have anything to worry you are not losing this pawn but even if you did lose the pawn like let's say for example you castled and you lost this nothing to worry because you just go rook b8 you put your rook on c8 and you're just better but here you can just play queen b7 knight f6 knight f6 and i think black is doing wonderfully well black has a nice advantage he can put his knight on d5 i like black's position so my opponent took i took back and after knight e5 castles queen g3 uh here he's threatening h6 but not a great move because i had knight e4 queen e3 i took took b into c4 and i managed to to convert this into a winning position because first of all his king is slightly weak secondly i have c5 break i can go rook d8 or rook b8 and this is just very very nice position you know overall um it was it was an interesting game but i managed to later on create counter play and with his king slightly weak it was easier to to gain an advantage for me of course it was a rapid game so not very accurate but um, the main thing that i wanted to show you with this game was this b5 break you know this move is just very nice so keep this in mind keep this guys all those who are asking for thumbnail story should go to the start of the video and check uh, i have already mentioned about it in that uh let's look at one one game very quickly on the same theme this was against grandmaster georgi timoshenko uh, very famous uh, gm i think from ukraine uh 
I don't need to explain to you the opening moves now anymore. It, it's all pretty straightforward. C4, Queen C7, Long Castle, Knight F6, Queen E2, and now Black to move. What do you play here? Black to move. All those who are going to uh, not get this move, I am going to ask you to leave the class because it's something that I've just explained. Let's see. Yes, very good. Ilam Parthi is the first one to answer. Well done, Ilam Parthi. Anyone else who wants to try? Nihilesh, Suryansh, Juicy, Sumed. Who else? Who else? Ishan, Lalit, Ryan Rajesh. Fantastic. Everyone has given the same move. Mayur, Kakali Paul, Navirat. Brilliant. Brilliant job. See, no one is giving any other move. That's what is so nice. Everyone's answering the same. Very happy to see the chat. Hey, Sanjay Choudhury, not E5. Come on, Sanjay. What's this? Breaking the pattern. Uh, Anirudh, if uh, white goes B3, then you just take and you just, if he takes with the pawn, uh, if he takes with the queen, you anyway get this square for your knight. And this is all weak in front of his king. If he takes with the pawn, this file opens up and you can launch a very dangerous attack soon. So B3 is not a good move. Yeah, yeah. Everyone who said B5, well done. No one's going out of the class, yeah? So actually when I say now you have to be go, you will be sent out if you say the wrong answer. Everyone gave a right, right answer. Joab Branco, welcome from Portugal. Great to know Joan. So that was just to uh, kind of reinforce the line in you. Um, yeah, I want to show you this game very quickly because there's one interesting moment. This was against India's latest WGM, Pratyusha Bodda. She is a very strong player from Andhra Pradesh. Uh, and uh, same line, BD2, Knight F6, Castles. Bishop e7 and here uh, she went king b1 and we have seen yeah knight e4 is, is one move and uh, I have uh, begun to think that queen b6 is what I want to do to king b1 but that point I castled when knight e4 and we have discussed this line where we take take knight f6 and we saw a few games with queen d5 idea right so I played c5 in this game and uh, I have already mentioned to you that this is kind of equalizing after dc5. My opponent should have gone for g4. I was quite prepared for this move in the game. Uh, but after takes, takes, knight f6, bishop f6, I think it turned out to be a equal position. We both played and I tried too hard actually at some point. When uh, she started to get an advantage actually uh, somewhere here, it was just simpler to just take on d6 with the rook I took. She took rook takes, rook takes b5. I was better here, but I just misplayed it. And then at some point she started getting a winning position here uh, just to show you a small trick. And I was just left lost completely. So I said, okay, f3 takes king d5. Let me see when to resign. She played rook e7. Uh, I took the pawn. And now I was expecting, say, b7, rook into a7, b8 queen. And then I was hoping, can I save all my pieces? Oh, no, he gives a check. She gives a check from here. I must go to e6. And then she gives queen c8 check and I lose my bishop and that's a lost position. I was thinking all of that and then my opponent suddenly played the move rook e8. Is this a good move? If not, why not? 
and how do you defend here with black? WGM is woman grandmaster. So what do you play here black to move because her point was if you take the rook I'll play b7 and then one of the pawn will queen there's no way to stop it. Yeah swindle mode last chance in the game. Rook e8, b7, king c4. Very good, Ilam Parthi. Very nice. Suryan shift king c6, then uh, just rook into a8, king b6, then just rook c8, and then if you take on a7, I take on c3, you will be losing. Yeah, Shibar Spieler, well done. Very good. So, rook e8. I took, she pushed b7 and this was my chance. I jumped in king c4 and this when uh, I was so happy because completely lost position was drawn with check. If king here mate, king c2, I gave a check, check and there was nothing that could be done against this perpetual checks and it was a draw. So. Yeah, yeah, that was what is problem. <clears throat> Rakshit Singh says, Sagar, when you play opening, do you always prepare for all the lines that are played with 1500-16 rating? Should I be aware of all the lines that can be played against my opening? No. <clears throat> Rakshit, this is something I have gained over the years. And I'm actually uh, speeding up your process of learning. But don't get me wrong on the way of preparing an opening. I think the best way is to have a cursory knowledge of the opening somewhere, you know, like a video from me or from some other grandmaster you have seen or some book you have just lightly picked up or you saw some game by Carlson and you just felt like, wow, this is something I want to play. And then you start playing it in online chess. You start playing it offline. And I think Amin Basim who came here gave a very good example that just you pl start playing online and every game that you play analyze it so that once you have played something that line becomes very relatable to you and you learn a lot from it very quickly so that's what i think is the right way this experience which i'm sharing is close to eight years of playing the karo khan so that is something which can only be uh, got by experience of playing and so that's why i think every game that you play no matter online no matter with your friend save it and to save it well i think you must use chess base so that's the reason why i would say get yourself chess base start working on these stuffs carefully save all your games analyze them that's how you w become better at openings okay now uh, this one was a nice game i'm not going to show you the entire game but I just am showing you more and more examples so that you become very well aware. I think at this point I was so uh, much I had played knight d7 that I thought let me try for e6. And my point was if knight e5, bishop h7, f4. This is a very well known, uh, not f f4 or not. I think, uh, how does it go here? I think f4 is the main move, right? Uh, yeah, sorry, bishop d3, bishop d3, takes, takes, and knight d7, f4. Yeah, this is how it goes. And I've played this a lot of times uh, now, recently. But earlier, I used to always play knight d7 here. But uh, this is, this in this game, I went e6. Yes, Grandmaster Repertoire is, is a good good game. Funny Verma says Amin Basim lost to Hari Krishna in Sharja by playing the Brayer system. Oh, I should have a look at that. I, I missed it, but uh, I should check. Rahul Sharma says, I have a question. What's the difference between a 2400 rated player and Magnus Carlsen? Well, there are a lot of differences and I always used to have these questions on my mind. 
what's the difference between say a 2700 gm and a world champion uh for me basically i think uh, say a difference between me and magnus carlsen would be that magnus understands uh, the openings much better he understands middle game much better he understands end games much better he can feel the positions much better his calculation is much better mm, everything every part of the game you know so it's how can i compare it let's say if you are a painter and you are talking about uh, an expert artist then every little thing that the expert does and there's also someone who is pretty good but not the best in the world his finishing will be slightly off his color combinations would not be the best his imagination would be not up to that level all of this you know, you know chess there are all these little things which magnus would do better than me yeah and then when you put them all together it translates into 400 elo point difference yeah also they make less mistakes because they understand chess better that's that's the point yeah so castles queen e2 was played uh, and now i played c5 and we know that this entire concept yeah like if your opponent doesn't take advantage of your move order by going knight e5 then you can just take develop quickly and then break in c5 don't develop knight d7 so here i played queen d5 maybe queen c7 was better but queen d5 takes bishop c3 knight c6 knight e4 i took queen takes and now uh just this move you know like i want you to think what should black play here because if you think about this move closely you will realize that um you will realize that this is uh somehow again will help you to understand this opening better what should black play yeah mitesh you are right 2400 is better at making mistakes than uh magnus yeah of course The difference is Magnus can offer a draw in five moves, and that video gets more than hundred k hits. Mayur, well, Mayur, that was just the reaction video. If you saw the ac actual video, that got twenty eight million views nearly. So, that's what happens. Yeah, between different. Very good, Shibar Spieler. You you are understanding this opening very well, Shibar Spieler. Um. nihilesh excellent murugan well done so the right move here is to play rook f d8 and uh, this is also another thing when your opponent is planning to play on the king side and start attacking you start playing in the center that's very important see a move like queen into f2 here wouldn't be so good because after queen g4 there is attack here on g7 that's that's a big problem for you to face so when you see that there is a problem you realize that i can play rook f d8 and i can put my bishop on f8 and defend this important point so this is what i wanted to show again through this game uh, it was a nice game uh, and i was i think better but i managed to lose it not a great result but yeah okay uh any questions i wanted to share one game with you against uh so that that opening is also covered up mass fairer yeah this one so the story behind this line is that uh i played it uh, spain in moncada open and i was playing against karen gregorian and i have covered this game in my imbalance series i lost that game from a completely winning position uh, and i was very sad and upset so the next day when i actually went to the board i wanted to play something which was very 
solid and I knew that opening well. So when he played e4, you can guess what I did. Yeah, I played the Karo Khan because I feel at home when I play this opening. So d5, knight c3, takes, takes, bishop f5 and now we've covered basically h4. So I want to look at this move bishop c4. Actually, uh, also I want to have a look at this move knight h3 here. Okay. So to knight h3, uh, it seems like knight h3 or knight e2, both moves are look pretty uh, harmless. But the idea is to put the knight on f4, put pressure here and then push the pawn to h4. So that if you play h6, knight into g6 will spoil the structure. That is the main idea. Okay. So what I recommend here after you uh, play knight e2 or knight h3, both lines is, let me just uh, open up my analysis. Yeah, there's this famous uh, game actually. I learned this idea from Andresian versus Aliano. So in that game, white played the move knight to h3. And so the move I recommend here is knight f6. Okay, you develop your knight. And then when your opponent plays knight f4, now you have to be very careful because he may want to play h4 move here. h4 and then if you play uh, h6, then your structure is ruined. So for example, just to give you an example, see you play e6, then h4, very strong move. Now I'm worried about my bishop because it's getting trapped or I have to play to f5 and then you can take and spoil my structure. So I play h6, but this is just losing after takes, takes and bd3. I think you can already resign the game. So after knight f6, knight f4, you are already, you have to be very careful. What do you play here as black? Ruchir Patel, 6 a.m. in Canada, going to sleep. Well, Ruchir, take care, take care. See you tomorrow. By the way, I must tell you guys, all of you are here. Tomorrow morning at 8 a.m., we are taking one day break from the chess with comedians, Umpruya chess with comedians and we are going to work on uh, doctor chess tomorrow. So I'm going to interact with all of you and try to understand if you have some issues in chess, how you can fix it like a personal session. So for that, please join the discord uh, server that we have. Uh, we'll be putting in the link in the description. It's already there. You can join in the discord tomorrow at eight is the first episode of doctor chess. Okay. E5, yeah, E5 is, is not a bad move. Actually, E5 takes Queen A5 check. This is a very uh, decent line. The reason I don't like it so much is that after, uh, say, Bishop D2, you play Queen E5 check and then... Um, I don't know. Or maybe no, 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 not first this e5 knight into g6 first. Sorry, h into g6, d into e5, queen a5 check, bd2, queen e5, queen e2, and I think if you if you like this position, you should go for it by all means. It looks decent for black, but white has the bishop pair, and you must play carefully against it. Nothing is like losing or you know worse you can put your bishop on c5 you can bring back your knight you can long castle rook is active on the h file so actually there are nice benefits of this position as well but i prefer uh, something else you know in this position And that is the move uh, knight to d7 here. This is what I would recommend you to play. Uh, now in this position, by the way, any questions? Let me just see. If I, if draw is fine, if not knight bd7. Yeah, Schieber Spieler, you're right. 
Schieber Spieler, what's your name and what's your rating? Mayur Gondalekar says, Seriously, Sagar, once over the board chess resumes, please become a GM. Then you would have I am GM, <laughs> Super GM in Tactics Trainer and Doctor title. Oh, also, Mayur, I recently gave the FIDE Trainer examination. So maybe there's one more title perhaps over there. Uh, 97 and now here in the game c3 was played and to c3 uh, the move that was played was queen to c7 and the idea is to always go e5 now instead of c3 if your opponent played the move h4 now what do you play so this is the the key variation that after h4 in this position you go e5 and the difference is that after knight g6 8 g6 d e you can already um, think of queen a5 check bishop d2 queen into e5 queen e2 and you will see that after say long castle you are up by several tempos over the position that we just saw in this move h4 does nothing but weaken white's position so black gets a very good position so knight d7 is actually waiting for h4 when you can strike with e5 so h4 is a bad move in this position okay ah roland margal you showed one of my games in improve your chess part 18 yes of course I just didn't know that your type, your name was Schieber Spieler. Of course, I know Roland. In fact, I think if I'm not mistaken, your game was about initiative, how to attack uh, in the center. Uh, yeah, fantastic. Roland is uh, Roland is working on his chess, and I think very soon he will cross 2300. Let's hope. Okay, so knight d7 and here c3 was played, queen c7. So till h4 is not played, you don't need to rush with e5. And then uh, queen c7, h4 was played in the game. And here uh, I think Eliano even e5 was pretty good. But Eliano was like, I'll castle. Uh, because if you go h5 now, then e5 is very strong. And the point is, if you take here, then knight e5 and that unleashes the attack on the queen. And if, you are, if you're going to move your knight away from here after e5, then where? But, you know, if you go here, my bishop is no longer trapped. I can move it away. So, yeah, h4, long castle, h5, e5, knight h3 was how the game continued. And here, uh, there was a powerful move actually it didn't happen in the game he played bishop e4 which was normal but there was a move knight into h5 very strong and then after knight into h5 came ed4 uh, and now you will see this king is facing the music like if you take back i can give a check bishop d2 i can bring the other rook and it's a, it's a complete massacre 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 on the board uh, resignable position so okay so this is how I think this line works out uh, and I like it even if your opponent plays 92 you go knight f6 if he goes knight f4, you play knight bd7 and quickly prepare yourself for the move e5. Okay. This is the best I feel. Mm, in the game, my opponent played bishop c4. And at that point, I was more like, okay, I'll play knight d7, knight e2, knight f6. And he played the move h4. And I was very worried in this position. I had lost previous day. And then I had my opponent because I started thinking if I go h6, he will come knight f4 and I played bishop h7 
and uh, he he actually castled here which was very interesting chess um, so all, all pretty okay but you know what I feel may be better to do in such positions after when your bishop opponent plays bishop c4 now you can uh, look at the move e6 perhaps because if knight f4 was looking at say bishop d6 uh, h4 then queen c7 if uh, queen f3 then c2 hangs in all these lines so that you should keep in mind uh, and then if he has to play say knight g6 hg6 i think already um, black is okay queen c7 i was thinking if queen uh, if h5 here but then uh, there is this nice move bishop c2 always works and then you take back and i think black is better Mm, yeah I don't know I played knight f6 but then after h4 I was thinking if he goes knight f4 first I was not sure maybe I would have gone e5 already like we discussed but with the bishop on c4 white is a much better version than before so I think e6 might well be the better choice after bishop c4 uh, even before knight d6 you could go e6 and then knight e2 uh, knight f6 knight f4 bishop d6 and now if h4 i'm always concerned about this move and this knight d7 move can be just left you know out there's no need for that okay knight d7 takes h4 h6 knight f4 i played bishop h7 castles knight b6 a5, a4, e6 and here rook e1 I was quite worried but then after knight d5 he should have played knight gh5 uh, putting a lot of pressure on my position if I if I take on h5 he takes with the queen if I play knight into f4 bishop f4 um, I don't know knight e4 then just knight d5 perhaps or queen g4 looked pretty risky to me uh, in the end uh, he went c4 I took took bishop b4 after rook e3 I just castled and I was all right I went on to win this game once you know black castles and has a nice position you can see that he has such a solid pawn structure that there's nothing to worry about but white has all these weak pawns and something fell like you know you can if you just even look at this game queen f3 i went bd2 rook e2 takes takes queen b6 you'll see how all the weaknesses are now just haunting white what should black play here how should black win this position now black to move can't attend doctor chess because of online school ilam party okay ilam party maybe soon we'll shift it to night but right now a lot of people who attended in the morning uh, and uh, <clears throat> we can do it you can join in later on yeah claudio aria says many congratulations sagar from chile how do you how do you pronounce it child chile you guys are doing a great job promoting good chess i wish i could have coaches like you in my country thank you for sharing your time experience yeah that's the beauty of online yeah you don't no longer need someone in your country you can just it's like a global world you can learn from anyone bishop c2 is decent move but of course yeah rook into c5 bishop c2 is also very good because then you pick up b3 but I just took on c5 because this pawn is pinned and you will see the full glory of all the weaknesses in the position rook d5 and then went on to win this so I don't Vishal09 thanks for your super chat he says Sagar bhai are you Jain by the way big fan yes I think my religion is Jain uh, that's how my forefathers were but I, I don't 
uh, not eat all these like they don't eat onions and potatoes but i eat it um also i'm i'm not such a big fan of religion as such and caste and all of this like i i prefer to just keep it simple we are all human beings just be good to each other um yeah at some point um, i also realized that there's no need for even god or anything of that sort so i'm a, i'm an atheist i just believe in doing good like constantly just be yourself do good things uh that's enough there's no need for but okay it's not a philosophy class uh we will discuss about these things later maybe some day uh yeah chila chi chi le okay i call it chili okay because there's peru next door <laughs> okay yeah yeah chess is my religion that's a good way to put it chessism okay guys i think we covered so much today in the classical system i'm going to talk about uh the advanced variation perhaps tomorrow and then we'll talk about the exchange variation once we cover all of that then i think i'll invite a few people maybe karo khan would become a bit long but i think it will become really solid yeah like you can you can just play it against anyone ravi verma you're also uh ca fantastic wonderful <coughs> okay i think uh, any questions related to karo khan anyone has any questions please let me know yeah jitesh will will work on kings indian defense as well at some point maybe we'll call ilam parthi to teach us kings indian what do you say ilam parthi would you like to teach kings indian he is strong and then he will teach something and then i can ask everyone whether i can i can ask him and then we can all learn let's see if that works out first he should say yes rajat agarwal uh yu jing ong can you also cover sidelines like fantasy variation yes that will be on day 4 so advance then uh, exchange and then sidelines <laughs> ilam parthi says maybe ask kasparo okay we'll try to get kasparo but if kasparo is busy then ilam parthi can join okay guys uh, let's any any questions related to the opening no if if no questions then i'll take your leave and i'll see you tomorrow uh we have a lot of things to do tomorrow so see you at 8 uh, where we will work on the doctor chess and then in the afternoon on the opening session advanced variation funny verma you should be given fide senior title well funny verma i'm not a chess trainer like i have not trained young chess players or just in person and i think online chess is still new so i don't think they would grant that also it's a honorary title so only they those who apply for it get it let's see let's begin with fide trainer if they if i manage to get it thank you thank you everyone who invented karo khan that's i think uh, we'll we'll Give, put that as homework yeah please figure out i don't know please tell me tomorrow who invented karo khan yeah please watch this again because we covered a lot and then you can learn a lot of things uh, just by watching it again and that would be nice Yes, Doctor Chess is the name Gautam Prasad, and it's not like we'll do it every day. It will be once a week, and the chess with comedians will resume day after tomorrow. So thirty days we completed, continuous thirty days. Now one day Doctor Chess, and then we move to again.
see you and meet you tomorrow bye